you can turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings 18. While you're turning there, I just want to read a verse from the Torah, from Deuteronomy chapter 28. This is Moses' kind of his final words to this new generation of Jewish people that are going into the promised land very soon after these words. And here's what he says to them. It's his real warning. He says, the heaven that is over your head, if you don't follow God, if you don't obey him, the heaven that is over your head is going to be like brass. In other words, you won't be able to get your prayers through. And the earth that is under you shall be like iron. <laughs> the Lord will make the rain of your land, powder and dust. Now you have to understand, the land of Israel cannot survive without rain. And he's saying, if you don't obey me, then instead of rain, it's, it's going to be powder and dust. And of course, then he says, from heaven it shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Well, that's quite a, a warning. Did you know that that was literally fulfilled? In 1 Kings chapter 17, when the prophet Elijah shows up at Ahab's court and tells him there's not going to be rain on the face of this earth, there's not going to be rain in this land for three and a half years. And of course, the reason for that is because the Israelites had apostatized. They had gone into idolatry. And that set up that showdown on Mount Carmel that is recorded in 1 Kings chapter 18. You remember how that ended? Fire fell from heaven when Elijah prayed. And uh, as a result, the nation of Israel at that moment at least acknowledged that Yahweh was the true God of Israel. And then, remember Elijah? He killed all the prophets. And when the last priest of Baal was killed, Elijah says, look with me in chapter 18 and verse 41. He said to the king Ahab, get up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And what he meant was by that is prepare for a real rainstorm. After three and a half years of drought, and by the way, the sky was cloudless. There was no visible evidence that there was a storm brewing. But Elijah was so confident that God was going to answer his prayer that as far as he was concerned, the storm was already rumbling in his ears. He says, there is the sound of abundance of rain. Elijah heard that with the ear of faith, and everyone else was deaf to it. And that's the kind of faith that only comes from God. That's the kind of faith that God wants us to have about things that are important to him, about promises that he makes to us as people. That confidence that Elijah states here, when he says, without a cloud in the sky, there is a sound of abundance of rain. There's a storm brewing. That's called convincement. You know what it means to be convinced of something? Elijah is expressing complete convincement concerning God's word to him. And I want to share some thoughts with you after we pray along those very lines. Thank you, Lord. And I pray that as Elijah could hear that sound of abundance of rain when no one else could, before the storm even formed, Lord, would you cause us to hear it? Would you cause us to have those kinds of spiritual ears, those ears of faith that come from you, that we could uh, be confident in answered prayer that has not even happened yet because you have convinced us because 
of personal convincement that we have from you. Thank you so much for this example that you've recorded for us in the life of the prophet Elijah. And we pray that whatever you want to do with it tonight, you would do and that you'd get honor to yourself through us, the hearers, your people. Lord, we just look to you. Pray that you'd grant that anointing that you alone can give us in Jesus' name. Amen. Convincement. What brings about convincement? What is it that convinces Elijah or convinces God's people now regarding things that are important to the Lord? Well, God has an assistant that he uses to bring convincement. And one of those is the word of God itself. Look at verse uh, 41 again, because in that verse where he says, Elijah says, there is a sound of abundance of rain. Where does he get that idea? Well, the first verse in chapter 18, it says, and it came to pass after many days, listen, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go show yourself unto Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. So the assistant that he had that brought him convincement was the very word of the Lord. He had God's direct word to him. And that is the basis. That is the foundation. That is the underpinning. That is the support that we need to have convincement from the Lord. It's the word of God to us. It's, a, it's God taking the scripture and making a personal application to our hearts. So we're convinced by God's promise. Of course, he also has previous experience that he can draw on. In chapter 17, the first verse, the word of God comes to him and he goes to King Ahab and tells him, there's not going to be rain. Now God tells him, go back and tell him there's going to be rain. So he has previous experience. And also in this 18th chapter, when they had that showdown on Mount, uh, on Mount Carmel and he prayed and that fire of the Lord fell and consumed not only the sacrifice, but the wood, the stone, the dust, and even burned up the water in this trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and they said, the Lord, Yahweh is God. And so he had previous experience to go, you know, Hebrews 11 is called the great faith chapter, right? Well, Hebrews 11 starts like this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If I could put that in different words, faith looks on things promised as though they're already fulfilled, as though it's already a done deal. Is there anything that God has impressed upon your heart in your personal time with the Lord, if you have a personal time with the Lord? Is there anything that he has impressed upon your heart and convinced you of that you are praying about? Is there any area of convincement in your heart? If so, can you hear it? I mean, the sound of abundance of rain. Can you hear it? God's promise, are you convinced of it? Because only when there is convincement can you pray with confidence? And I want you to also note, while we talk about convincement, the participant, <laughs> guess what? Only one person, Elijah. Now he has a servant that he gives orders to, and that servant follows his orders. But he's the only participant. Look at verse 42. Ahab went up to eat and drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, this mountain, and he cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees. Now, that's a pretty awkward position for prayer. Uh, as far as I could, I, I mean, think about that. To me, that's like being on your hands and knees and putting your head down, you know, towards uh, facing your, your knees. Kind of an awkward position for prayer. But 
he's the only participant because Elijah is the only one that really heard from God about this. Elijah is the only one convinced by the word of God. And so he's the only one that's ready to pray. He's the only one really that's fit to pray. And although when his prayer that he is confident of is answered, many people are going to experience blessing because of his prayer. And his position in prayer in that 42nd verse, really, to me, it reflects a spiritual attitude. There's no specific position that we have to pray in. But this really is a spiritual attitude that I see of earnestness, of urgency. In fact, in James chapter 5 and verse 18, it says that Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, but he prayed earnestly. He prayed earnestly first that it wouldn't rain, and it didn't. And then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. And so he is really the only participant, and his prayer is being, not because Elijah is any greater than you or me. He's a person of like passion. See that? Why is prayer his or ours or anyone's ever answered? Because of the grace of God. Prayers are only answered by God's grace and for God's glory. It's not because we're special. It's not because we're more spiritual. It's always by God's grace and for God's glory that our prayers are answered. But I'll tell you, God does honor earnestness. God honors fervency. He said that the the, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. God honors fervency in prayer. Because fervency and earnestness is an evidence of you really believe. You really trust God. You really have faith. You know, this is amazing to me, but it's, it's, it's wonderful, too, that God has condescended. You know what that word means? It means he's humbled himself. God has condescended to human beings because he has chosen in his sovereign power to get his work done on this earth by one means, through praying people. You realize that? If you don't pray, God's work doesn't get done. But I'm telling you, if you don't pray, someone else is. Because I don't believe that anything that God wants to accomplish on this earth ever gets done except people pray. And if you're not praying, someone else is. But shame on us if we're not praying and leaving it up to someone else. Participants, convincement. And then look at verses 43 and 44, because here's the second part of the sound of abundance of rain. If you hear it, it will be not only because you have convincement, but because you are persistent. Verse 43, 44. He said to his servant, go now, look toward the sea. Mount Carmel, there's certain parts of it where you can see the Mediterranean Sea from it. It's that high and it's that close. So it says, he went up, verse 43, and he looked and he said, notice there is is in italics. In other words, he came back, nothing, nothing. I don't see anything. There's nothing. And then Elijah says to him, go seven times. (laughs) You got six more. Go seven times. And it says it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, not a big one, like a man's hand. That's not a very big cloud, is it? The size of a man's hand. And uh, Elijah says, well, Go up and say to Ahab, prepare your chariot, get down, that the rain doesn't stop you. There's persistence in that, sending that servant seven times. Nothing is visible. Nothing to indicate that there is a storm, a rainstorm coming for seven times. But then there's, there is evidence. He has the word of God. And so, but when you have, when you have convincement, convincement will look with expectation for evidence of God's answer and will not give up 
until it comes. Because if you have convincement, you know it's not a matter of if God answers, but when God answers, it's going to happen. And even when nothing visible is present, you trust that the answer is on the way. You know, think about it. All those three and a half years, there was not a drop of rain on the land of Israel. But guess what? All that while, through those years, the sun was soaking up, the sun was gathering up, drops of mist into the clouds from the rivers and the lake and the and the sea and storing it up until the winds from the Mediterranean Sea would carry it over the land of Israel and spill it down in torrents when God said now. When you think about that, perhaps the answer to your prayer if you have convincement, is nearer than you think. And perhaps the longer that you wait for the promise to be fulfilled, perhaps the greater the fulfillment will be. Because it's storing up all of that through believing prayer. So there is persistence that looks for evidence that is that has confidence I want you to see verses 44 and 45. It came to pass at the seventh time. He said, there's that cloud the size of a man's hand. And uh, Elijah says, well, go tell Ahab, get into his chariot and get home before he can't because the rain's going to mire the wheels of that chariot and he won't be able to move. Verse 45, it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. There was a great rain, and Ahab rode and went to went to Jezreel. So listen to this. Here's the, there there is persistence that looks for evidence that has real confidence. That convincement leads to persistence, which brings forth encouraging evidence. And when that evidence appears. It leads to a great, bold declaration, a great statement, an action to prepare because it's coming. He says, go tell them, get home as quickly as possible. There's rain. It's coming. All he had was that little, little cloud, size of a man's hand. But he makes a bold statement because of the confidence that he has. And then verse 46, last verse in this passage. <clears throat> And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. He girded up his loins. That means he, he tucked his long robe that was down to his ankles in his belt so he wouldn't be hindered in running. And it says, he ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Wait a minute. He's on foot. Ahab's in a chariot with at least one, maybe two horses pulling it. And he outruns Ahab's chariot. Well, here's the thing that I want you to see. There is convincement. There's persistent, he's persistent, and as a result, things become apparent. That is, finally, when God answers, supernatural power, the power of God is released, and miraculous things happen that can't even be explained, that cannot even be uh, anticipated. Miraculous things happen, and God's answer becomes real marvelous evidence that the sound of rain has now become a downpour. And as a result, many people would experience and would enjoy God's blessing because of a man, one participant, that had convincement that was persistent, and then it became apparent. God has sovereignly set it up so that nothing happens on this earth without God's people praying. Mark that down. That might sound like uh, an overstatement, but I, I suggest and I challenge you to ponder that if you don't, if you haven't thought about it before, ponder that. That's the way God has set it up. James 5, again, I'm going to read those verses. Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. 
He prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. He prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth fruit. Do you have any word from the Lord that you can claim? Is there anything in your heart, mind, and heart tonight? Any word from the Lord that you can claim? Is there any promise that God's convinced you to pray for something, to pray for revival perhaps, for God to change the heart of some individual, some person? And if so, if you have any word from the Lord, are you being persistent, even though perhaps you don't see anything yet? You don't even see that? Small, man's hand size cloud. Has God given you any small visible token the size of a man's hand? Has God given you any visible token about that thing that he's convinced you of, that God's at work and that the answer is coming? I wonder if with your spiritual ears, you can hear the rumble of the sound of abundance of rain on the wind of the spirit. Sometimes we get discouraged in the long wait, right? When we pray for things that we want very badly to see God do, to see happen. And I remember uh, not too long ago, I was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, please, just give me a token for good. I got that from Psalm 86 and verse 17, where David prays that, so that his enemies would be put to shame. Lord, just give me a token for good. And I gave him a, a, a specific thing that I asked him to do. And it happened. And so I took it and I praised the Lord for that. And then I said, well, Lord, do that again. And he did it again. And it further convinced me that what I'm praying for, God's going to do. It's not a matter of if, but when.